Welcome back. It's time for Chicago Fire Field Vision, powered by NovaCare, as we take a look at some of the good plays. There were quite a few of them that happened for the Chicago Fire this past week, and they're a 3-0 win over the New England Revolution. Is it time to you guys take time and break down some of the good things? There was a lot of good things. There was a lot of good things. We talked about it, but let's just look at the few that we can you know, break down and analyze. And the first one, we had uh, Lucho Solniak here on the show, and you can just see, you know, defensively picking up that second ball, the little combination on lick-up play, and then his movement in depth, and then Schweinsteiger recognizing the space, and then this is what we talked about. You make the runs, the ball is going to be there. Everything was per perfect, other than maybe the delivery, a little bit lower on that, uh, but just the buildup was fantastic. And then this was a sequence of 31 passes. You know, I kind of cut it shortly, but the fire did a great job just moving the ball lateral from one side to the other, just unbalancing the midfield. And this is where I thought it was an opportunity where this is probably the 25th pass where Harrington can play a quicker pass to Dax. He can turn and then it's 4-4 the other way. He doesn't play that. That's fine. They still keep possession. They move the ball again from one side to the other. And it's so hard for those inside midfielders to cover the whole width of the pitch. And this is what we talked about, Frank. If you move the ball back and forth, sideline to sideline, against the diamond midfield, it pulls them out of their defensive organization. You start to create pockets of space. And that's what the fire did so well in this game and in this moment. Just patient buildup, and then at the right moment when they sense they're out of position, boom, you attack the space. They switch the ball out wide again. Good overlap and run. Harrington cuts inside, and a much better service here. And this is that offside goal because, you know, the initial one wasn't offside, but then that deflection to... Uh, Nikolic running through it was, but the whole buildup was fantastic. And here's the goal from Schweinsteiger. And again, look here, Kellen Rowe playing at left back. He doesn't understand the spacing. He, he, he's not sucked in like he should be. And that allows Schweinsteiger to get into the space. Solonyak recognizes it, plays him into that pocket, and it's a goal for the German. And then here we see again the, the goal from Nikolic. Again, Lucho Solonyak, the big switch. He's one on one. He beats his man. And both strikers able to get inside position on the center backs. Delu can't make contact, Nikolic there to clean it up. And this is just a great, this is, you know, Schweinsteiger making that little bit run to the channel, recognizing the pace of a come coming in, no chance for Smith to come and mark him up. Great movement by Nikolic, and this is what he does best. But I go back to that pass and the movement by Akam, because this is a situation where if he's involving as a player, if he can bring that to the table, because he's so dynamic, you can't mark this guy one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. He always gets a, you know, double team or triple team. If he gets his set up in situations like that where he can find the open player and then just become more of a complete player in the final third like that, you got to watch out then. You got to be <laughs> I 100% agree. And Frank, I also think that we are seeing the evolution of David Akam in understanding the players around him better, not just in the past, which is huge. You're right. To get his head up and find and, and play that weighted pass, that's something we haven't seen David Akam do a lot. But also the run. You know, we talked to Lucho Solniak about the idea of getting that vertical run going and trusting and knowing that Schweinsteiger is going to find you if you make that run. In this moment, David Akam isn't waiting for somebody to make eye contact with him and playing the ball to his feet, and now he's dribbling 30 yards against the defender. He takes off running. It's a one-time pass from Schweinsteiger, and now he's in space and he's going. The more David Akam starts to do that, the better, and it's going to be a really important aspect of the Toronto game. They push their fullbacks forward too far at times, it creates a lot of space, and there's going to be chances to beat them over the top. We'll look at it in the next segment, but David Akam can be huge in that if he starts to make those vertical runs early. Yeah, definitely in transition, but the, the movement won Schweinsteiger right there, because recognizing the minute he moves into that channel, he sucks out Farrell, which isolates Akam one-on-one -on -one with Smith, and I think Smith chasing Akam, I think mm -hmm. he almost pulled his hamstring on that play. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great because recognized now he knows he's got a guy like Nikolic, and we talked about it. I saw all the goals that he scored in Poland. You know, the guy is always anticipating like a striker. He's always in the right spot, and he's clinical with his finishes. And then he got a great ball, and that's what I'm saying. If you can get a comp to do that, because we know he can get the ball with pace, beat one guy, beat two guys. But sometimes if he can get his head up and make that pass, okay, I think it's going to get – He's going to be isolated a lot more. You can't double team him now because right. you've got to worry about the other guys. What's really changing this team to me is the movement and the recognition of the guys on the outside. And there's a lot of competition there, whether it's Lucho Solignac, David Akam, Michael Delu. At this moment, Nikolic, I, I was talking to a, a Greg Berhalter about him a couple weeks ago. Inside of 20 yards, if you give him space and an opportunity, he's going to put it away. He, he finishes at a very high rate from 20 yards and in. He's not going to be a guy that picks up the ball 30 yards away from goal, turns, and creates on his own. But 
the service into the box has to be there. And we saw it in this last game. Both goals service into the box. In the one nothing win over Columbus, he received that pass about 20 yards from goal, turned and hit. The more we start to see that kind of movement and service for Nikolic in the box, I think the more you're going to yeah. see weeks like this where he's scoring two goals. 100%. And I think for me, it's all about the team and having guys that they care about the team. You know, because when the team does well, everybody benefits. And then you heard what Lucho said. You know, he said that we have a guy that can score. Yeah. You know, because he's a striker too. And believe me, you know, there's not, you know, he wants to contribute and score, but he knows how important it is now to play for Nikolic and give him those passes when he makes runs like that. And if you can have that kind of mentality, believe me, there's only one winner, and that winner is the team. And there wasn't a big adjustment for David Akam because for the longest time when he was here, it was him. They were expecting him to score. Now they pick up Delu, Solanak, they bring in Nikolic. Now it's a different game, and that's why you're starting to see and the balls that he's getting from Schweinsteiger. I mean, there's nothing but excitement on that, on that line up front, and the competition, too, was absolutely it, it, great. That's the big thing. I mean, there are a lot of guys that are, are worthy of being out on the field. I think it's very difficult to put Michael Delu on the bench, David Akam on the bench. I don't know how you put Lucho Solanak on the bench after performance last week so this is the competition that we're talking about